Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for an important conversation regarding the future of public safety and park services in the city of Gresham. I'm your host, Mark Garber, and I serve as the president of the Portland Tribune and Community Newspapers. A little over a year ago, the city of Gresham conducted a broad public outreach process regarding Gresham's unique funding challenges under Oregon's property tax system and the impact of those challenges on core services in the city like fire, police, and parks. That outreach effort ultimately resulted in a $7.50 per month police, fire, and parks fee for Gresham households, although not in the format in which it was initially proposed. Based on feedback from the public, the City Council established a sunset date for the fee, capped the amount, provided an avenue for very low income houses to have some assistance, and pledged to look hard at a property tax measure as a potential revenue tool to replace the expiring fee. That time is now approaching, with the fee expiring on June 30th, 2014, about eight months from now. The community is now facing a big decision in terms of weighing its service demands and the best way to pay for them. Joining me for this discussion tonight are some key stakeholders in the City of Gresham. I'd like to welcome Mayor Shane Bemis, City Councilors Lori Stegman and Mike McCormick, as well as Police Chief Craig Jenniger and Fire Chief Scott Lewis. Thank you all for being here tonight. Let's get started with a question for the mayor and the city councilors. Many Gresham residents might be wondering why this um, increase in funding is needed at all. Could you give us some background on why the city believes it's unable to continue the current level services without raising additional revenue? Sure, and thank you for having us tonight, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, as we talked a year ago and we went through the town halls, uh, we started to make the case of uh, where we were financially. And we've been saying for, at least I can think of, almost every state of the city I've given for the last six years that Oregon has a funding problem as it relates to local governments and their ability to provide core services. Finally, I think there's starting to be some momentum around folks starting to understand that because other jurisdictions are starting to hit that too. It just happened to be that Gresham with the low property tax rate of $3.61 per thousand was um, we were kind of at the forefront of that conveyor belt because of uh, that artificially low rate that was uh, capped under the property tax measures. So we have been playing catch up um, almost ever since the, the mid 90s when these limitations went in uh, to place. We have done uh, a very good job at masking some of those deficiencies, but we've gotten to a point now where um, you know we're talking about 19 or 20 police officers that we can't afford to lose. And as we've had those conversations in the public, as you mentioned, the $7.50 fee was, was what came out of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, counselors, uh, maybe you could add some perspective there to uh, what the mayor had to say. Sure. Uh, well, I think, like most Gresham residents, many of us have lived here for 20, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. So we've really seen Gresham kind of from a sleepy farming agricultural community turn into the fourth largest city in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And what I've always loved about Gresham is that, you know, we have this quaint downtown with great restaurants, great shops, but yet, you know, we have, we're a big city, but we have that small town feel. And I think that a lot of uh, companies, companies and residents look at Gresham and, and think, why would you want to live here? Well, it's because of, of those qualities. So I think it's really important that we preserve those qualities. And it's kind of, I liken it to uh, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, where she says, there's no place like home. Mm. The mayor and uh, mayors before him and council and staff have worked so hard to build such an amazing community that I just think it's incredibly important that we continue to preserve that community that we've all worked so hard for. Mm -hmm. You know, some uh, residents may also wonder, uh, is it an advantage to have the, one of the lowest property tax rates in the state? And, and where would we rank um, uh, in the pack if, if, it were, if it were raised? Yeah, if you, if you take Oregon's top 10 largest cities, we're at the bottom of those in terms of, in terms of uh, property tax rate. 
Well, the statistics we're talking about now is if you take the, the money that the fee uh, was able to put into the police department, if you back that out, you lose 19 or 20 police officers, which puts us on a, on a police officer per thousand ratio. Mm -hmm. There's only one city in Oregon that would be lower than us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we talk about it being an advantage to have low property tax rates, that might have been true in the 90s. But if you look past and you look at every other community in this region, you look at West Lynn, you look at Wilsonville, you look at Tualatin, you look at Lake Oswego, you look at Beaverton. We have not passed any additional revenue in this city since 1993. We, in my view, we are at a defining moment where we have to make some investments in this community. And it's not just in, into the law enforcement. I mean, this is one piece, I think, of where we need to talk about in the future. And, and partly we're doing that in another committee to talk about what are the transformative things you want to have see in the city. Mm -hmm. But we have got to make some investments to um, get ahead of the curve on some of the downward trends mm -hmm. that we're seeing as it relates to uh, some of these livability issues. You just can't operate Oregon's fourth largest city on an anemic tax base. Mm -hmm. yeah. Council McCormick, you're a relatively new member of the council. Yes. Um, were you surprised by what you found when you, when you, you know, got involved with the fiscal aspects of the city? No, mm -hmm. no, because uh, they've been running on a lean budget for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, how we maintain the livability of our city uh, has everything to do with the property tax. I mean, and the beauty of it is, I mean, people in Gresham have always been very active, and the beauty of it is, is they have a say-so. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I've had several people, you know, say, "Well, you have this fee of 750, but." Uh, we don't really have anything to say about it. And I said, well, that was predetermined through a series of meetings which involved the public. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so now at the end of 18 months, you will have a say-so on it because there will be a levy on the ballot and you will be able to say whether you like what's going on or you don't. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. We'll get into the details of how, how people will have that say and the mm -hmm. process for that in, in a second. But I wanted to turn to Chief Jenniger and um, you know, the mayor and the counselors have alluded to the fact that uh, the police department, you know, 19 police officers are at stake and um, you know, what would such a reduction mean for police service in the city and how does Gresham compare with its peer cities in terms of police coverage? <clears throat> Losing 19 police officer positions would almost be about 11% of our police department. Mm -hmm. Now our calls for service every year are going up two to three percent for the prior year. So if we look at cutting that much of our police department, what you're gonna see is what we enjoy now, if somebody calls 911, they'll get a Gresham police officer at their door within four and a half to five minutes. Mm -hmm. If we cut 19 positions, we'd wind up like a lot of other major cities in the United States where they're waiting 10 to 15 minutes for an officer to show up when their life's at stake. Also, certain investigations wouldn't be completed and citizens could be waiting for hours for a police officer to show up at their door. Now compared to other jurisdictions, as the mayor alluded to, we're about 1.1 officers per thousand, where most other police departments in the Portland metro area are, are at least 1.3 or 1.4 officers per thousand. Okay, and uh, Chief Lewis, looking at the fire department side of this, so the temporary levy, you know, it's protected two fire stations from what I understand, or the equivalent of two fire stations. Um, what would the effect be if the funding's discontinued? Well, a city the size of Gresham at a little over 107,000 probably should have six fire stations just in the city limits itself. But we have six stations, and that includes our contract cities, Fairview, Troutdale, and Wood Village, and District 10. We basically pay for two of our fire stations. So if we were to lose two within the city of Gresham, we'd have a city of over 100,000 people with literally just two fire stations in it. And that would be appropriate if your town's about 20,000, but definitely not 107,000. Okay. So what would the real world effects for residents be in that case, I mean, in terms of response times and, and service? Well, you know, our firefighters do the very best job they can with what they have. And they would continue to do that but it is simply a matter of time before we have a negative outcome by not having the people available. Everybody needs a fire station in their neighborhood because getting there quick really does matter. And uh, we can't 
overstate that uh, whether it's a, a child that's choking or, a, or somebody having a heart attack or a house on fire, those few minutes by having that neighborhood fire station really do make the difference. So it would just be a matter of time before we have some very negative outcomes. Mm. Okay. So um, coming back to you, um, Mayor Bemis, you know, what, w w the discussion's been about a five-year levy. What would that look like? What would it cost a typical homeowner? How does it compare to the $7.50 fee that, that people are paying, which you know, they pay actually every two months is a $15 fee on their water bill? Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, right, the $7.50 fee raises about $5 million. So mm -hmm. in order to raise the $5 million and keep where we are at right now, you're at about $1.25 per thousand, mm -hmm. which if you, you add in for um, compression, uh, houses that are in compression and what, what the city would lose to that, et cetera, et cetera, and you do the math all the way down the line and you take a tax deduction for your interest on your mortgage or, or, or um, the tax deduction, you end up at about 739 mm -hmm. a month uh, mm -hmm. to what the average homeowner uh, will pay. Um, one of the questions that we want to, you know, as we begin the, the outreach process, one of the things that we want to talk about is what if you add additional resources in? So we know that this number gives us the status quo where we're at. We know that if we have this, we can get to maybe some more livability issues, i.e. some of the parks issues, um, <clears throat> or some of the fire life safety stuff as well. And so mm -hmm. that's the discussion we'll have in between the five and the $7 million range uh, with, with the public. So you or the other counselors, could you talk a little bit about the process that you anticipate undertaking the have this conversation with residents before it before it actually appears on the ballot in, in May. So we've had uh, um, we had a robust conversation around the fee. So at the end of the fee process, we had about ten mm -hmm. um, public meetings on it, which was very beneficial because, as you mentioned in, in the opening, we ended up changing it to what we heard from the public. That is the process that we are in right now, and starting that uh, with with conversation with the public, including what we're doing here tonight. But we will continue to have continue to have conversations. The council will ultimately determine uh, in December um, whether or not um, or what the public safety levy will look like going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, another question that I think, uh, you know, I've heard in the community and other people are probably thinking about, at the same time the city's considering this property tax increase, the Gresham Barlow School District is, um, and there, and the, its boundaries include a portion of the city, not all the city, but a portion of the city, is also proposing a property tax increase to pay for physical improvements of the schools. Um, you know, voters will decide that matter in November. How will the school district's request and the voters' response to it factor into your decision making? I, I, I think the decision on a public safety levy is, is, is done, right? I mean, I, th I mean, I think the decision coming up to, leading up to, additional revenue is done. We've mm -hmm. got to do something, whether or mm -hmm. not, um, uh, obviously not in November, that'll be in May. Mm -hmm. From my view, again, having, um, having grown up here and being very passionate about this city, we have got to make some investments. We've got to make some investments in education. We've got to make some investments for our city, and, and we've got to get ahead mm -hmm. of some of these issues. Other communities are passing us by. Mm -hmm. They are. I mean, there are other communities in this region that are passing us by. Meanwhile, we know what the issues are. We know what the problems are, especially as it relates to public safety. Finding the resources to deal with those problems and get a, uh, get a hold of them is what we're trying to get at. Mm -hmm. The school district, I think, is, is equally as important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Counselors, would, would the two of you like to respond to that as well? Sure. Well, I mean, I agree with the mayor. Mm -hmm. I mean, good schools good jobs, good government, good public safety. It all goes hand in hand. And I don't think that uh, it's wise to sacrifice any of those. And as the mayor mentioned, uh, you know, we have not had an increase in our tax base and our revenue to support our police and fire to keep up w with our fast growing community. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we're just at a point where um, many of our establishments are, are, are in need of repair. So, I mean, personally, I support the schools. We need good schools. Mm -hmm. They need, you know, we've got Gresham High School's 100 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there's definitely a need. 
uh, but at the same time, we also need to protect those investments and the people that live here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you, you mentioned that, so the decision's are already made, but it hasn't, the council hasn't yet voted, has it, to, to place this levy on the May ballot? L let me speak for myself. Okay. The All decision right. for increased revenue mm -hmm. is made in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, we made that, we, we talked about it a year ago and mm -hmm. through the 10 public meetings, laid out why we are where we are mm -hmm. um, and, showed, and, and showed the need. I don't think you have anybody arguing necessarily that there is or is not a need for mm -hmm. additional revenue in the police department. If you mm -hmm. do, I think that's a small, a small percentage. When I talk to people, it gets to something you alluded to as well, what about the fee versus, versus mm -hmm. uh, uh, a levy? And that is something we're, you know, we're, we're still mm -hmm. getting information on. Um, but at this point, from, from everything I've seen, it looks like a levy uh, would, would grow with real market value would be the best mm -hmm. um, approach to adding a little bit of stability into the department, mm -hmm. albeit in five-year increments. Right, right. And uh, under Oregon law, you can only, um, five years is the maximum amount of time that you can That's put correct. a property tax levy on for. That's correct. So you know you alluded to other communities passing us by, and, and maybe the the three of you could discuss from an economic development standpoint. You know what are the pros and cons uh, of of increasing the the property taxes. In terms of economic development, I think we have. I mean, we are at a great space for economic development. We have some of the only. Um, uh, state certified industrial land and almost mm -hmm. 300 acres of it of anywhere in the Portland region and mm -hmm. we continue to get leads and are continuing to work that and that will bear fruit it's just we're getting it's, it's taking a little bit of time when I first started uh, almost 12 years ago in in elected office in Gresham I used to think that you could economically develop your way out of the systemic problems in Oregon's tax structure mm -hmm. I'm convinced now that you can um, mm -hmm. no matter how much assessed value you continue to add in um, you, you get to a point where the population has exponentially grown and, and the numbers have not, the revenue numbers have not matched that growth. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think economic development is again a general fund um, budgetary pressure uh, as we talk about um, you know general fund going for police and fire you also have to feed economic development out of that mm -hmm. and um, this fee wouldn't do that but you still have to you still have a full service city that you have to be laying the groundwork to do to do these things. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a good spot for economic development. Um, I get concerned about um, I get concerned about people's perception and view of Gresham in terms of how it relates to small businesses. If we are on the news every night for issues that are happening in our city, um, that's a problem, and mm -hmm. it's a problem that I think anybody that's lived here for any length of time has mm -hmm. seen has seen the slow erosion. And it isn't like there isn't a lot of good people trying to make a difference. And these guys are doing great work. There just isn't enough of them, in my view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you feel that those types of issues discourage businesses from, from coming to town or industries from expanding here? Well, I, no. I mean, I don't. Th I, what I'm saying is, is as you start, as the perception starts to move across, I mean, I think you work in... Um, you work for a lot of different newspapers and you mm -hmm. hear different things and you know what the perception is of certain areas of our city. Mm -hmm. And that perception is not far off of reality. Mm -hmm. So finding the resources to be able to get to that reality and get to a place where we can fix it mm -hmm. is what's important. I think we've been successful in economic development. We've got a ways to go mm -hmm. and we will with the, with the opportunities that we have with the developable land that we have. We've been uh, heads and tails above a lot of folks in the small business incentive program that was wildly successful. Mm -hmm. There's 225,000 square feet of programmed retail and 144 new businesses. That's pretty mm -hmm. impressive. Mm -hmm. But we've got, to, in order to sustain those things, these are all good, we're moving in the right direction, but in order to sustain those things, we cannot be on the news every <coughs> night for issues, uh, livability issues, um, that are, that are going to be tearing us down. Mm -hmm. and, and at some point, it's not safe. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at that slide that shows where you take away 19 officers, which is what this, what the fee will do when it expires. Mm -hmm. And you look at that slide, and in the only city, the only city per thousand that is lower than us is Columbia City. Mm -hmm. yeah. How's that working for us? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have got to get after the, some of these issues. And did we get a chance to share that graphic? Have we shown that? We could. Okay. So uh, back to the police chief then. You know, the mayor talked about the challenges specifically with, with law enforcement. And uh, you've 
been in a number of cities uh, in addition to Gresham. And, and so what, how do we compare to places that you've been before uh, in terms of those challenges? And, and you know, what are the things that your officers are seeing you know, out on the streets every day? Well, you know, compared to places I've been, mm -hmm. we're obviously, uh, our staff is more reduced than they are in other mm -hmm. places because of the, the tax structure in, in Oregon and the fees that we get. But, you know, one of the reasons people live in the city of Gresham, I live in the city of Gresham, mm -hmm. I own a home here, it's because of the quality of life in the city of mm -hmm. Gresham. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to go along with the mayor, there's no doubt that people have been here, and I spend a lot of time talking to people in the community that are second and third generation families in Gresham, mm -hmm. the quality of life is eroding. Our, our city is changing. And the problem is, is that we do a fantastic job, the men and women of the Gresham Police Department, in solving major crimes. What we don't do a good job of is those things that bother everybody, their quality of life issues, the, the issues going on in their neighborhoods, mm -hmm. in their parks, in the downtown core. Those are the things we aren't doing a good enough job at, and those are the things that mean the most to the people. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important now to keep our staffing so that our city doesn't erode any more than it is and this quality of life stays like it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really is a great citizen, city and we have a lot of great citizens in it. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see it stay that way. Mm -hmm. So Chief Lewis, um, oh, as the city has grown, um, what changes have you seen in the types of services that your department needs to provide? The fire department responds to everybody's emergency, no matter what that is. And mm -hmm. we see our calls for service continually increase. And uh, we have certain neighborhoods that are, are, are busier than others. We have a couple of the busiest engine companies in the state of Oregon, right here in Gresham. And so mm -hmm. part of that is the social economic factors that drive calls for service. Mm -hmm. But we're also seeing um, the severity of the calls are increasing. Uh, we have a baby boomer population who's quickly aging and adding more demands for service. So all those things that make our fire department busy are compounded because of uh, the, the reduced number of staffing we have. Uh, in the uh, last 15 years, Gresham hasn't added, well, they added the last fire station in 1979. The city population has more than doubled since 1979. Mm -hmm. So. Those things that make the police department busy make us busy. We're frequently at the same calls at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of time before the demands overwhelm the resources and then we really get some people in trouble. And you know, another question that I've heard in the community, and, and this may fall to the political side or also to you, is I think you alluded to this earlier that uh, your department serves more than the city of Gresham. It serves mm -hmm. um, you know, the cities of Wood Village and Troutdale and Fairview. Um, and so if Gresham residents are being asked to pay more to help support these services, what will happen uh, in these other communities? Well, I can give you a, a quick answer. Mm -hmm. uh, we currently have a 10-year a contract. We're a little beyond halfway with that with our other cities. Mm -hmm. And the uh, rate that they pay goes up uh, by 4% a year, every year for the term of the contract. So they are, uh, their rate of pay has increased more than the city of Gresham's <coughs> rate of pay. And we get a great return on their contribution because we have those other resources available to us. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, would you have anything to add to that? I think the, the city manager has been um, yeah. very diligent in hammering out a great contract with the three cities, ones that's that's fair and equitable to them, but also mm -hmm. realizes that there is an increase to services. Um, and I think as we head into the next negotiation period of that contracting for services, it will either it will either pencil to the level that our residents are paying, or it, there just won't be a contract. I mean, mm -hmm. they have to pay, um, you know, commensurately and equally with what uh, the rest of the folks are paying. Mm -hmm. And we will be fair about that as we always have been, and they and I'm sure it'll be it'll be just fine. Okay. We're getting close to the end here, but I want to come back to the two counselors and just uh, Mayor Bema said that, that you know, he's pretty determined that, that, that this will move forward and probably the levy form. Are, are you still weighing whether the levy versus the, the monthly fee are, 
which option would be best, or, or what are your feelings about it? Well, in the meetings that we've had with the community, mm -hmm. it's been very positive. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, amazingly so. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll just have to wait and see what the, what the community wants when the levy comes out. I mean, it's, it's, it's the people. Okay. You know? Yeah, and, and ironically, during these town hall meetings, uh, you know, last year we heard people say uh, that they didn't want they dislike the fee, mm -hmm. and you know, to the credit of our leadership at the city and at the council level, uh, we listened to what they had to say, mm -hmm. and that's why, which I find it ironic because the folks said we don't like this seven dollar and fifty cent fee. So we mm -hmm. said, okay, what would you like? They said we would mm -hmm. like you to look at a property tax mm -hmm. levy. So now we're looking at the levy, and ironically, people are coming forth and saying, well, you know, maybe that utility fee, that mm -hmm. fee's not such a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So no, for me, uh, I haven't. You know, it, it's hard because at one point in time you have a group of people saying we want this, and then a mm -hmm. year later they're saying, oh well, maybe that's not such a bad idea. So, but no, I mean, I think there's many tools in the toolbox. So I'm not completely uh, have my mind made up at this point in time. I do think that the property tax measure is the most sustainable and uh, the most equal if there if there can be such a thing so at this point in time yes I would say I'm, I'm pretty much in support mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so in these discussions with the community though regardless of which mechanism is being considered there's a general acknowledgement that something needs to be done is that is that a fair statement I yes. think that's that's what we've heard loud and clear mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. town hall we had at, at City Hall I mean nobody's happy about paying more money nobody is happy about talking about increases and and I'm not happy to to lead that discussion and to have to talk about it but I do know that we've got to make some investments when you start to talk to the people in the town hall and you say how long have you been in Gresham over 20 years almost everyone's hand went up in that yeah. audience almost mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. have you seen a change yes mm -hmm. you know and um, I think we have um, we have done a very good job at the city of being efficient, of finding efficiencies. I think we've demonstrated that. I think we've asked <coughs> citizens to pick up the, the pieces where we have not been able to and get them engaged in volunteer opportunities. Um, but we, 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 we will always be efficient, but we're going to need a little extra resources. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's going to have to be the final word. Looks like our time is wrapped up for the evening, but I don't want to sign off before thanking our guests for joining the conversation and thanking our viewers at home for tuning in and being part of the process. For more information on Gresham's revenue situation, visit www.greshamoregon.gov slash investgresham.